Hi everyone, this is Walt Bayless. I'm the CEO and founder of Gojio.com. And today on Dolph Barron's Leadership Show, we're gonna be talking about slaying the beast that steals your time and so that you can do something epic. That's today on Dolph Barron's Leadership Show. Stay tuned. Congratulations. You are tuned into Dolph Barron's Leadership and Loyalty Show, the number one podcast for Fortune 500 executives and those who are dedicated to creating a quantum leap in leadership. Your host, Dolph Barron, is the founder of FullMontyLeadership.com. He's an executive mentor to leaders like you, a contributing writer for Entrepreneur Magazine, CEO World, and he's been featured on CNN, Fox, CBS, and many other notable sites. Dov Barron is an international business speaker who was named by Inc. Magazine as one of the top 100 leadership speakers to hire. Now, over to Dov Barron. Welcome, dear friends, fans, and fellow aficionados of leadership excellence. I'm your host, Dov Barron, founder of Full Monty Leadership, and I'm here to assist you tapping into your deep greatness so that you can reach that next level of clarity, focus, purpose, and profit in your business, your life, and your leadership impact. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Doug Barron's Leadership and Loyalty Tips out of the Full Monty interview series, where today we're going to take an insider look at conquering the beast that eats your time. If you're a new listener, new viewer, thank you for joining us. Strap yourself in. We're about to go Full Monty. You can also find us on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Tuna, Dot FM and Stitcher and a whole bunch of places where you normally find your podcast. You can also find us on traditional radio every Monday and Thursday in a bunch of radio stations across the United States, including in Boulder, Colorado on 96.3 FM. If you're a regular, big thank you to you for making us the number one show glo- globally for Fortune 500 listeners and where we had the potential of reaching 2.5 to 3 million listeners with every show. So we're honored to be cited by Inc.com as the number one podcast to make you a better leader. Oh, and by the way, if you've got Google Home or Alexa, you can now find us on there too. Simply say, Alexa, play Dove Barron's podcast. Ah, exciting. Okay, thank you for sharing the show with everybody you know. Remember, we always need your help in staying relevant, so please get yourself over to iHeart, to iTunes and Spotify, rate, review, and subscribe to the show. All right, let's strip it down, dive right in. Whether you're a leader in the C-suite, whether you're a CEO, whether you're a sales leader, entrepreneur, whatever capacity you're in, you know that being a leader today, whether it's a corporate environment or entrepreneur, you know that business can shift on a dime. One day you can be working for a great company with a great future, and boom, you sell the company and you're unemployed. As an entrepreneur, you can be killing it. And in a shift in technology, that stream can dry up and your income with it. Therefore, as a leader, you must have a social presence. But who's got time for that? So how can you stay on top of your personal brand, your social presence, without having it suck the life out of every moment of your day? Well, stay tuned because you, my friends, are about to find out. Our guest on this episode is Walt Bayless. Walt Bayless is the founder of several software companies which have generated millions in revenue, yet employs no staff. What about that? He's a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. However, that's not what he used to slay the beast, the beast that eats your time. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome Walt Bayless! You can hear the chanting. Now, for, for anybody that is listening, they're lucky because this is the Full Monty episode, right? And this if you're it. listening, you're lucky because Full Monty means you're absolutely nude. So if you're listening, you're lucky because you don't get to see me in the nude. If you're watching, well, bad luck. You can see what you can see. But Full Monty, mate, it is great to be on with you. That's good to have you on, man. And by the way, folks, um, in case you are listening, you should know that we, even on the video, we have blurred the nipples because Facebook doesn't yes. allow those. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. I've actually, I've got a, you know, I have to have blurred nipples permanently these days, you know, just to, uh, just walking down the street. It's, you know, it's exactly. starting to get that way. The wife's not keen on them, so we just pixelate the nipples at home. It's, yeah. it's a cosmetic procedure. It's an exactly. in and out. You're done in a second. <laughs> well, in the beginning there, I talked about how you, um, <laughs> I've, I've thrown you. How you have, you have slayed the beast. That eats time. What is the beast? Tell us what is the actual beast that eats not not just that wasn't just eating your time was eat, has been eating mine and everybody else's that I know. 
You know, it's funny. As you look around you, Dov, you can see the evidence of the beast in every single person that you speak to. The last time I had a job, uh, which I, I'm very grateful for, and I'm also very grateful to not have one anymore. But the last time I had a job, uh, I remember just, I remember clearly on my last day of work, I, I was taking my coffee mug to the coffee room. You know, you had to walk, I had to walk past my colleagues and I'd get to the coffee room. And there was five people I had to walk past on my way to the final drop off of the coffee mug. And every one of them, as I passed them by, was on Facebook. Yeah. As I, they were at work, but they were on Facebook doing their thing. As I, and if I go into any office anywhere, I will see evidence of the beast. And the beast that eats your time, you can see it at a bus stop. Yeah. People get eaten by the beast. You can see it in family time. Where families are sitting together, the beast is present. And Dob, I have to tell you, for me, it was a meltdown. It was an absolute meltdown. Mm. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But the beast is this, is I guess now the, uh, the cost of doing business in today's world. Yeah. Right? So, Dov, let me ask you, have you got an email address? Yes. Have you got more than one email address? Yes. <laughs> have you got a Facebook profile? Yes. Have you got a Twitter profile? Yes. Have you got a LinkedIn page? Have yes. you got a social presence? Are you constantly bouncing between checking all of those? And if your answer is yes, then you too are taming the beast. You have the beast in your pocket. Mm -hmm. The beast that eats your time, Dov, is keeping up with all of this stuff. We watch people day by day in every facet of their lives bouncing between Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and keeping up with that email and answering that one more call. And because of this constant change between all of these different platforms, which is the cost of doing business today, yeah. The time is being eaten rapidly and you just, you can't get it back. We've managed to tame that beast. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later sure, on. Sure, but I mean, that that beast is a fairly new beast in that, you know, it social is. media has not been around that long. It, I mean, I know that some of our listeners and viewers, it's always been around because they're young. But the truth of the matter is, I remember when they were talking about Web 2.0, which yeah. was actually going to become social media. And... I know that the fastest growing demographic on Facebook is over 60 years old. You know, it's a lot of these things that we thought were for kids are becoming for adults. Um, yeah. Instagram is the fastest growing business platform. You know, it's, it's amazing that even, you know, even Gary Vaynerchuk talked about it. So it's kind of like it feels like for, for, for leaders, yeah. we're in the CEO position, we're in the C-suite position, we're a high level entrepreneur. I don't have time for all that, but I can't exactly. afford not to have it. I That's can't the afford I, I'm not, you know, somebody said, I had a conversation with somebody the other day who said to me, are you on Instagram? And I said, yeah. And they said, how long have you been on? And I go, very recent. And they go, really? And I go, yeah. And and they, and they said, oh, it's so great for business. And I, and I was like, yeah, I had to get on because I felt like I was missing out. And I'm on LinkedIn and I'm on all those other platforms. And it fe this is what I want to bring to you all is it feels yeah. like, if we're not on those things, we are. We could miss out on something at a business Absolutely. level. So exactly. So have we got to be on all these things? Well, well, the question is, can you afford not to be? Right. And and that's exactly the same scenario for me. It was LinkedIn. I was at a seminar, and uh, you know, hearing about the business connections on LinkedIn. And I had resisted LinkedIn because, uh, you know, I just, uh, it was, because I'm one of those old guys, right? I'm, I'm one of the ones that, that wasn't born into the social media age. And all this LinkedIn, LinkedIn, I was, oh my God, okay, all right, or okay, I'll get a LinkedIn account. All right, I'll do it. So I got a LinkedIn account mm -hmm. and I just went, oh my God, that's just, it's another one. It's right. another one that I have these now connections, people connecting that I have to keep updated. Do you have to, your question, do you have to be on all these things? Right. In today's business world, unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm going to say yes, you have to be. You literally have to be. Even if you're a Fortune 500 CEO, you need to have an Instagram, a Facebook, a LinkedIn profile. You need to have a following in those spots. As you mentioned, Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary talks about the, the presence of your content on all of these different channels. And the reality is, even if you've got a team of 100,000 people behind you, you are still the figurehead of that business and expected to have those social media platforms. And again, who's got time? You've got board meetings. You've got customer interactions. You've got a team to run. When are you going to have time to get onto these social media platforms? But for you and I, as we know, 
what started as for the kids, in inverted commas, it started as for the kids sure. and there was just, you know, sharing the family photos. As your friend said to you, now Instagram's so great for business. And you and I go, really? Wow. Mm. So you, you have a look at it and you go, there's hundreds of billions of opportunities going on in there every single minute. How can you not be there? If you're, yeah. if you're advertising traditionally, you've got a billboard down by the freeway, you're already out of touch. You need to, even if you're not an Instagram aficionado, even if you're not a Facebook master class giver, you need to have an understanding of these platforms because that's where the business is. So we've got to have, we all get now as leaders, we've got to have social media. We've got to be on all the platforms, but it's a beast. It eats our time. It, it consumes our awesome. time. So the options are, I give it all my time. I learn what I need to learn. I get it done so I can do it. Or I hand it off to somebody. Yep. And invariably, part of social media is, it's really brought to the fore, the, the desire for authenticity, the desire for, desire for real connection. So if I hand it off to, to Susie, my assistant, or Charlie, my assistant, you know, Charlie might not know shit about it. He might not, and he's certainly never going to be me. Exactly. So, so the problem there, well, talk to us about that because a lot of people yeah. want to, you know, certainly high level individuals want to hand it off. They want to say, okay, Absolutely. well, you, you, I'll pay you X amount of dollars. You take care of it because I, the, the beast is eating my time. What Absolutely. I've got things to do. I don't have time to update yeah. my status every 20 seconds. And that's been, you know, for, for, for myself, that was the path we took as well. I handed off to a VA. They were doing the social posts, but somewhere down the path, somebody's going to look at that and and not hear your voice, Doc. They're, you can have Charlie or Susan or Greg or Janine, whoever it is, po posting on your social media. But the reality, the reality, and that word reality, doesn't flow through with that. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't flow through. And And as a leader in today's business world, you need that authenticity and you need that connection. Now, should you have... An instant answer for everybody. Should you be answering everybody on social media? Absolutely, 100%. No, right. you should not. But should you have a visible presence? Absolutely, 100%. Yes, because that is your brand. You know, talking about branding and leadership. And you were saying from, from a business world can turn on a dime and new technology can come tomorrow. What if you are the CEO of that amazing company and you get wiped out tomorrow by a change in technology? Somebody's going to look, and where are they going to look? They're going to look on social to see your history. They're going to look at the social side of things. And if you're not there, you, you haven't got that longevity to carry it forward. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I was, I was speaking to some people from HR and they were saying that more and more now they are looking for a social presence before they hire anybody. And, yeah. and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is they want to check out if they're jerks and doing stupid stuff. But yeah. it's also to, to see how uh, conversational they are, how available they are. Because if I'm going to employ you into my company as somebody in the C-suite and you're going to be the CFO, the CMO, the CIO, whatever it is, I want to know that you're going to talk about this company. And this is yeah. one of the things that I think that people forget is that now whatever your job is, part of your job is going to be an ambassador for my company. Absolutely. So you are expected. And, you know, you talked about it, Walt. It's not, I mean, I think it's probably less than five years ago that people were getting fired for being on social, for being yeah, on social absolutely. media. Yeah. Today, it's a requirement, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Today, it's a requirement. If you were on social media, you fired, you're wasting time. Now, you are allotted an amount of time to be on social media, but you have to do something that is engaging with this company. So absolutely. you're expected to be an ambassador. Now, that is somewhat okay if you're a, if you're a paid employee but as somebody who's a leader that's another time constraint and Absolutely. and so it becomes this place of okay i need social media i need my presence as you said you can get wiped out got no job a hr of another company is looking do you have a social presence are you interactive do you engage people are you real are you authentic is it some cookie cutter stuff where you're just posting quotes what is yeah. it really 
But again, we're back to the beast, aren't we? Well, I mean, we're yeah, back to it. oh my god! Wait, I'm, it's eleven o'clock at night, and I'm still doing. I'm still checking my my Facebook messages and my LinkedIn messages and my Twitter messages and my Instagram. And being there goes another. There goes another update, and being there goes another update, and and that's it, Dov. Like, so it, it's all very well and good. We say, okay, we need it, and even if you're listening and you say, okay, well, okay, Dov, I need it. Uh, you know, geez, I'll, I'll suck it up and I'll go and get it done. It's the beast. You sign up. You got now. You've got Facebook, and 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 all of this incoming stuff joins your in your inbox, and that whole concept of email has just completely eaten that seventy percent of your time already. Now you're adding Facebook. Now you're adding LinkedIn. Now you're adding Google Plus. Now you're adding the next one and the next one and the Instagrams and the whatever. How do you manage that? And that's that was the question for me when we looked at. See, for me, I said I, we need to do something epic. We need to create something epic. And I was trying to find the epic problem. And for me, as I looked around, the epic problem, the epic problem is for every single person, the more social media becomes part of our life, the more our life gets sucked into it. And we don't have the chance to get out of that and do our own epic things. Oh, yeah. Here's my, here's my new social media post. My new social media post. I've just got it. Here it is. Uh, I'd like to update you on my life, but I'm really busy updating my status on every fucking platform <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> I'd love to tell you what I'm doing right now. But, but what, what I'm actually, I'm actually doing right is now, updating this. It's telling you what I'm doing right now. Yeah, exactly. So when, when do we get that? How do we... There's only 24 hours. Unless somebody really clever has come up with a way of getting more hours in the day, every time we add one of these social feeds, which we've now accepted is a reality and is a necessity, it chunks off that 24 Right. And we're, we're getting less and less and less. So we need to be able to wrap that together and say, okay, we need one place, one system where all of that can be managed, monitored, maintained without it being that massive time suck of jumping from platform to platform. So you talked about going on LinkedIn or being yeah. everybody nagging you to go on LinkedIn. You went on LinkedIn because it was a business place. Yeah. What did you notice there, aside from the fact, oh my God, this is just another platform that I've got to put time and energy into it. What, you know, because you talk, like what, be, when did it become obvious to you that this this is not it? This is not the yeah. way? Well, I think I, I tried to make something of it. Like LinkedIn, there, and there's lots of professionals out there that, that, uh, that um, really espouse LinkedIn. Uh, and I can see why. So if you go on to that platform, as you know, you go on, there's incredible people talking about incredible things, um, building those connections and building those networks. Um, and, you know, there, there's that, I guess that probably 5% of people that are really LinkedIn professionals and they, yes. they have their whole systems on LinkedIn. Uh, when did I realize it wasn't the one? When I tried to get on there and go, okay, so how's this going to work for me? And I just went, oh, my God, it, 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 I literally just signed up to be another blog post, another whatever, like uh, probably within the first two weeks of trying to make it work, of reaching out with those connections and saying, OK, if I wanted to reach that person, I need to be, you know, I need to have more on my own profile. OK, I'll go and update that profile. OK, well, I need to connect with that person. And suddenly you just turn the stopwatch on, click trying to get into it and watch that stopwatch is going, there's an hour, there's another an hour, there's two hours. And you're trying to get the best out of that platform. And you, how the hell are we going to do it? You just finding a way to make all of that work. Um, I think for anybody coming in as an uninitiated, so let's get started. You know, you're brand new on Instagram, brand new on LinkedIn, whatever it might be. You open up that platform and you go, right, everybody told me to be here. Now what? Right. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a million courses out there. But the reality is it all of these Instagram, Facebook. Uh, and when we talk about it from a business perspective, all of these platforms are simply a window to your content, being able to to publish, being able to connect, being able to be authentic and people finding you via whatever window you happen to have open. And if we're talking about more business, CEOs, leadership, companies and growth then you need to have as many windows open as you possibly can. So the bottom, of line is, is, bottom line is social is not going away. No. Bottom line is you've got to be on it. But at the same time, it's a beast that's eating your time. And that is going to lower your productivity um, and lower, potentially lower your results based on the potential for opportunity. So there's this Absolutely. weighing of, well, there's this opportunity to do more business. 
but it's also eating my time. So and most people will not do it for that reason. Right. Wouldn't you think so? Too busy for it, right? So too busy. What what drove you to look for a solution? Because you went looking yeah. for a solution to that. I mean, we're yeah, all, I I'm looking for a solution. We're all looking for a solution. Anybody who's in the leadership role is going through this. We're all looking for a solution. But you took it a step further. You decided to not only look for, but create a solution. Yeah. So a little bit of background. We, we've we been creating business software online for uh, close to 10 years now. Um, when my daughter was born, I, I looked for a way out of the, I guess, the um, the employee trap. And, and best respects to employees and, as I said, to employers, um, for me, I was the career professional. Dove, I was I was in at the office at seven in the morning. I wasn't getting home until eight thirty at night. In fact, if I had more employees like I was back then, I'd be thrilled. I was the ultimate dedicated professional, but my whole life was that career, was that job. When my daughter was born, when my daughter was born, uh, I was gallant enough. Please underline the word gallant. I was gallant enough to take two whole days off work. Oh my God, two whole days. What a knight in shining armor you are. I took these two days off and I went back to the office, this place that I dedicated the last decade to, and I sat at my desk and I just, I completely lost the connection. I went, there's, my daughter is in the hospital with my wife right now. She's two days old and I'm here at this desk doing what? Doing what? And that was the turning point for me. I started to look for ways to uh, become self-employed. And that, as I said, that was 10 years ago. So we're creating this business software and, uh, I guess um, uh, for me, I, I'm, I'm hesitating as I say this, but we, we've been creating the software. We're starting to get some growth and uh, uh, probably everybody listening to this will be able to relate to. There was a time where there's a dark path of things you can do with software. This, and, well, and what well, I mean by that is- just pause you can, for a second because I, the, the, I think that most of us who have a moral compass- Yeah you know, when we hit the wall or when it becomes overwhelmingly painful in a place, yeah. that option to go down a dark path, I mean, let, let's, not, let's, not, let's not only spotlight software people because I know it's true there, but <laughs> it's true. I mean, I think for all of us, yeah. I, I'll tell you, yeah. I'll be really transparent here. Uh, when I fell and off the mountain and got smashed to pieces, and the, the, in the year I was, the year after when I was in recovery, and I was I was working at nights in a, in a gym, and I was broke. I mean, I had gone through yeah. living in a beautiful house and car, and broke, and so desperately wanting to get back, that a guy who used to come in the gym at night said, "I can help you out." Oh, sure. What do you do? Do you want to deal some of this? He was dealing cocaine, mm -hmm. and he said, mm -hmm. "I can let you have I can let you have a half kilo." And like great price and here's the deal and you'll make loads of money and doing it right here is going to be a great is. environment. And I will, let me See. be clear to everybody because I want to be transparent about this. Was it tempting? Damn right it was tempting. I was yep. in the shit. I needed the money and I wanted to, to kickstart my career and come back. Did I do it? No, I didn't. I didn't do mm. it. But was it tempting? Yes. So I want everybody, you know, as you stand on your as your high horse be careful not to get bruised as you fall off it because yeah. here's Walt describing that that temptation is is there for all yeah, of everywhere. us and so for all and, of us and in software it's it's really available right yeah it's easy it's easy to create so let me explain like it's easy for us to create something black hat something spammy something you know um that's it just click a button and it does stuff but it's not quite ethical as it's, it's easy to create that kind of thing in software and that's that's where I was. So you asked, what was the turning point? Why did I find a solution? Because I had, I was, <laughs> my wife will tell you the day. So, so broken working in the gym. My wife will tell you the day where we've, we've been in business for, for a little while, a couple of years. Uh, we've, we've created some things, but you know what? <laughs> like we were just, we were miles in the hole. We got down to having 22 cents in the bank account. Wow. 22 cents in the bank account. And I remember clearly. Kid. You with a little kid, with a little, with a, uh, a two-year-old, um, and a, a second one on the way, and uh, twenty-two cents in the bank account. And uh, I remember, I put on my my running clothes, and I said to my wife, "I'm going for a run." And for those of you who have met me, know that that run's not going to take very long, right? That's that's not a long time that I'm talking about being out of the house. It ain't a marathon. But it was minutes. It's not hours. It's minutes. But I put my running clothes on, and I said to my wife, "I'm going for a run," and. 
if we haven't made any money by the time I get back and I've given myself minutes, then I'm going to have to go and get a job. I'm going to have to go back, get a job, do what I can, right? So I put my running clothes on Dov and uh, I'm heading out the door and I remember standing in the driveway, still getting choked up as I talk about it, standing in the driveway and I just, I looked up and I just said, please help me. Please help me. If I'm on the right path, please help me. And then I took off on the run and we got, I got back, I got back and we'd made 18 cents. I'd gone from 22 to 40 cents. But do you know what I did, mate? What I did was I said, thank you. Sure. Because all I said was just let me do something. And I said to my wife, I said if I hadn't made any money that I was going to go back and get a job. But I've been told that I'm on the right path. 18 cents later was a click on an ad on on our blog site or something. We got paid for a click, right? 18 cents. And... I said to my wife, this is, I, I, I feel it, we're on the right path. And I looked at what we'd been doing and one of the things that we'd created was doing this automation. It was completely white hat, it was 100% on the right path. And I looked at it and I thought, I wonder if anybody else wants to buy this. I created it myself in Excel, like all these macros and things working the ways together and blah, blah, blah. And I had this Excel macro and I thought, I wonder if anybody else would like it. And I put it up for sale and we made $35,000 that weekend. Wow. Right? Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, that's a serious turnaround. You know, yeah. that, to me, that was, and that was the start. So what's happened then? Fast forward. We, we, we took that. We went forward. We created some other programs. We're working. Now things are going pretty well. We're starting to, to make some money. And I started to get invited to seminars, etc. Started to talk at seminars about, you know, working from home, creating your own businesses, that kind of stuff. And I was at a seminar. And this is the long answer to your question. I'm sorry, mate. I was at a seminar and, uh, and we, we had this, uh, these programs working and secretly I had this dark path calling me as well, mm-hmm. fast and easy money down there. Yeah. And I'm sitting in this seminar and uh, a gentleman named Brad was the speaker and he said, um, he, he talked directly to me, it felt like, in a room full of 500 people. Are you, are you doing something epic with your life? Are you doing something epic with your life? Are you doing something that your grandmother would understand and that your kids will be proud to tell their friends that you're, that that's what my dad does or that's what my mom does? Are you doing something epic? And I sat there in this lecture, in the seminar, with this pad in front of me, and I wrote the name of this dark path software that I'd been tempted towards. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I just put a line through it, Dov. I just, I, I put a hundred grand into it and I just went, that's not what I want to be known for. Beautiful. That's not it. That's not the place that I want to be known for. That's not who I am. That's not what I want to do. So now I'm now I'm at a crossroads, right? So this this program I've been working on is suddenly no more because I want to take a, a much cleaner path. Great. So uh, <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> so uh, where are we? Uh, what are we? What are we creating now? If we're not creating that, what are we doing? Right. And I I fluffed around, and and uh, as part of that was the connection on LinkedIn. So I'm fluffing around, I'm trying to find our new direction. Uh, I get uh, I get this introduction to go and get on LinkedIn, that'll help you get started, that'll help you find the new direction. And again, I went through the meltdown of, oh my God, now I've got another place to to uh, to maintain and to update. And Dov, when you're trying to find something epic to do, mm-hmm. so many times you want to do something epic and you have this feeling of, yeah, but what? I'm just me. I, I who am I in the world of epic? I'm 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 just this little person. I can't do it. Yeah, well, when you right? say do something epic, I think there's a lot of our viewers and listeners are going to go, well, that's great. Well, you're you, you know, but I'm just me. You're, I mean, yeah, I, 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 and that's I, it. I, I, epic is way too big. I, I, mac- I can't do it. Micro. I, I'm a little person, right? And uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg's a little person. And, and uh, uh, Buffett's a little person and Elon Musk's a little person. They, everybody, we're all just little people who made a decision to do something bigger, mm-hmm. right? So if you're sitting there thinking, yeah, I'd love to do something epic too. Well, but who am I? Then I've been in that same place. I was looking, I wanted to do something epic. I've signed up for this LinkedIn. Oh, I had this complete, I don't have time for this kind of breakdown, as we said. And that's when I spotted the epic problem. 
And I, I talk to my kids about this doing something epic thing. And I say, if you can solve a problem for the most amount of people, that's where you'll have success in your life, right? I don't know if you've seen the movie uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Yeah. Great. I love it. Kids yeah. classic. And he solves the problem. He says, what's the biggest problem in the world today? Untied shoelaces. I've invented spray-on shoes. And my kids say, do you mean like that, Dad? We have to solve the untied shoelaces problem. And I said, yeah, kind of. But look around you. And in, in it, we started the conversation by saying, today's untied shoelaces for business leaders, for, for CEOs, for people running companies, for anybody who is in business today, the untied shoelaces are these hundreds of different places and windows and connections and the absolute lack of time to yep. deal with any of them. And I went, that's my problem. Mm. That's my untied shoelaces moment because they're only gonna get bigger and everybody's time is only gonna get smaller. And I said, that's my window right there. Let's solve it. And <laughs> that was naive because I thought, that'll be easy, yeah. surely. Of course. Surely, totally. that'd be simple for somebody like me. I'm clever, I can make something that'll brick. Yeah, that was three years ago and half a million dollars it's taken me. It's taken me half a million dollars out of my own pocket and three years. Because it was an epic problem, right? And it needed an epic solution to be able to do it. But the turning, yeah, the turning point for me, Dov, was literally saying, "This is my point where I get to make an impact and solve an epic problem." And it was a it was a turning point for me. So, and and I want to come to the solution you came to in a minute because uh, I think yep. that's it, something I really want to talk about because I think it's absolutely fabulous. Um, but I want to bring it back to the epic piece. Um, as I said, people are going to, some people are going to go, oh, but I'm just me. And you're right. Everybody's just me until you do something. Yeah. Um, but the, the guideline you've given, I think is an important guideline, which is what is the epic problem I can solve That's or it. could conceive of solving. And I, one of the things I like to say is, you know, instead of thinking competition, think collaboration. So if I can't solve it, who do I know where we could work together to solve it. What so, can I bring? What can they bring? Yeah, what can I go and bring? What can, so I, I just want to sidebar for a moment, Walt, if that's okay with sure, you. Sure, absolutely, mate. And I want you to give our, our viewers, our listeners, some guidance in about how to potentially um, recognize or find a problem they could solve or they could collaboratively solve that would yeah. have an epic impact. How, how would you... How would, you, how would you guide them to look for something like that? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think um, for everybody that's listening, you, you, might be, uh, you might be a sales executive. You might be somebody that has a leadership role in your company. You're somebody that wants to get ahead. If you're listening to Dov Barron, you're in that space because you want that self-improvement. You're already there, right? And so my guidebook to solving the epic problem or even finding the epic problem is your own frustration. So if you're looking at your life, you're looking at your high profile, fast paced, connected uh, and successful life, where are you frustrated? What isn't working the way that it should be working? And you don't have to have a solution today, Dov. You don't have to be able to say, this is a problem and therefore here's my answer. The guidebook starts with recognition and we say, what, what frustrates you? And if you're if you're completely zen, if you're the if you're the person, if you're the one person who's sitting there going, because there is only one, <laughs> there is only one, and they're sitting there going, I have peace and calm. Then do yourself a favor and look around you and ask what are other people's frustrations, right. because you can see it. And if you go out next to a busy road and stand there for ten minutes, you will see enough frustration driving past you to last you a lifetime worth of epic ideas. So look at your own frustration. What's working and what isn't working? What what sucks? What are you looking at in your life going, God, this is just too hard? Write it down on a piece of paper. Just, just write down your frustration. What is it? This, this sucks. That's it. Just write it down. And then ask the same thing about the people around you, about your colleagues. What sucks for them? What do they really struggle with? Where are they at? And then just write down the problems because what will happen is technology catches up. Mm -hmm. 
So you'll, you'll have, you just by the very act that you've written down a frustration, then tomorrow or the day after in Entrepreneur Magazine or in TechCrunch or some blog post or somewhere on Facebook, somebody will talk about something and you'll go, wait a second, could that be the springboard to solve that? Right. Oh, and when you get that little global insight, just write that down next to your frustration. So frustration one equals ABC. Solution potential equals DEF. And before you'll know it, you'll have a string. And you talked about collaboration because you might look at that and go, okay, I can see ABC as the problem, but there is no way I can get to XYZ as the solution because I just don't have the skills. But what can you do? I can take my ABC problem to person in the middle who already does X and I can springboard into the solution from there. Collaboration, not competition. Who's already got halfway? If they got all the way, you wouldn't have the frustration. Right. So they haven't yet. So work with them, somebody who's already got half of the solution and your idea to the ultimate and put it together. Bring something to the table where, where we can eventually move everybody forward. That's, that, I mean, I think that that's great insight. You know, I've, I've often said that, uh, that, what is it that uh, something is the mother of invention? What is it? Necessity. Necessity. And I, I, I would restate that and say, Frustration, and I've actually said this in, on, on, on stages, frustration and pain is the mother of invention. It's Absolutely. when I'm pissed off enough that I go, no one else is solving this problem, so I've got to solve this problem. That's where the entrepreneurs are born, right there in that statement, isn't it, really? Yeah. When you go, nobody else has solved this, and if I don't, then it's going to keep happening. And, you know... Dov, we talk about frustration, and it's not just that, um, oh, my God, I can't find anything on the TV to watch tonight. That's not frustration. For the frustration we're talking about is if this doesn't change, then my life sucks and I can't go ahead with the next 100 years of my life hating this thing. That's the frustration. And when you, when you, you just hit the nail on the head, when you say to yourself, well, if nobody else is going to fix it, then it's up to me. That's where an entrepreneur is just born, right there, in that moment. Right. It's like saying, I believe in fairies, right? Right then at that moment, when somebody makes the statement, if it's not going to happen, then I'm going to fix it, a new entrepreneur is born right there. But even that statement, if, if, you know, if nobody's fixing this, so it's up to me, and then the head goes, well, but I'm not capable. But I think <laughs> what you said <laughs> is so important it. is that you may not be, you don't need to be. You just you need to, to be the guy. You just need to be able to willing to put it out there to collaborate with others. Absolutely. You, you, the first thing that goes through your mind, like it did for me, like it did for so many people that are listening, I'm sure, who are already on that journey, the first thing that will go through your mind is, if it, I'm going to fix it, I'm going to fix it. And then they go, but I can't do that. Right. Right? And that's where courage kicks in. Mm -hmm. And we say, don't worry about being able to do it. Just worry about taking one step towards the solution. Just one step. And if that one step today is just writing down an idea and making a phone call or sending an email about that, that's the step. Yeah. Because if you can take that, you know this, and everybody listening knows this. If you can take that step, you can take another, and you can take another, and you'll look back and you'll go, damn, we solved something epic. And I had, I started with a lack of belief because mm -hmm. we all do. And at the end of the journey, you're going to go, of course I managed to do it. But at the start, you're going, I have no idea how I'm going to get started. But by the end, you're going, damn, that was actually just a series of steps. So you were at this seminar. You had the, you heard this speaker say, do something epic. You had something you were highly invested in. You decided that's actually not on my moral compass. I need to ditch that. So what was the epic you decided to create? What was the epic problem you decided to solve? <laughs> well, I decided to slay that beast. Of, as we talked about before, we, we talked about the beast that eats your time. And when I looked at it, I said, that is my dragon. That is my epics problem. So we put, we put our heads together, put our thinking caps, and I said three years and half a million dollars later, what can we do to bring everything together where we don't have to bounce from Facebook to LinkedIn to email to my other email to my other email back to LinkedIn back. Oh, somebody just messaged me. Somebody sent me a Skype. Oh, somebody's on Slack. Hang on a second. 
my day's gone, kiss my wife, wake up tomorrow, get nothing done. How do we solve that? Right. But what we did, what we've done, is we've brought all of those things together, all into one place. We started with email. Because email is the biggest, uh, I guess, uh, uh, portion of the beast, right. we started there. And you can have multiple emails. So we wanted to make sure that that was easy to manage. And then we brought in social because that's where the real pain started to kick in past email. We said, let's get email solved. Great. Let's bring in social. So now from one dashboard, you can maintain all of your email accounts, all with different um, signatures, all with different contacts in one place. Across the top, you also then have all of your social, Facebook, Twitter. You have your LinkedIn feed everything there in one place. You have a Slack integration as well. So you have Skype, you have Messenger, you have everything in one central dashboard. And then we added, what's the next thing that you want to be able to keep in touch with? Calendars and mm -hmm. contacts. Right. So we've, we've got in our one single dashboard, all of your email, all of your social, all of your contacts, and all of your calendars and appointments, all of your tasks and to-do lists in one dashboard. So I, I go onto this this dashboard and yep. I go, instead of clicking into Facebook and checking my messages and then getting caught in the Facebook feed and all the other nonsense that sucks my time away. Yeah. Um, and instead of clicking out of there and doing the same thing on LinkedIn and starting reading stuff on there and getting sucked away again, and then Twitter and Instagram and whatever the hell it might be, I go, hold on, I open up this dashboard and I go, there's my LinkedIn feed, there's my Facebook feed, there's my Twitter feed. And I go, okay, any messages in there? Any emails in there? What emails in there I can hand off to my assistant? And these are the ones I have to answer. And I can post my content. And I can I also like get content, say I've written this short article and I want to put it up in those places, but want to I don't want to come back on tonight at four o'clock when I've got a bit of time. I want to just <laughs> stick it there now and have it go out at four o'clock. Absolutely. So that's our that's a module called publish. So the um, so the core that we talked about. You're exactly right. You log on to one place. And when when I was um, designing this with my team, I said what I want this to be is the first place you check in the morning, and the last place you check at night. And everything is in one. I can do everything from one screen. And I'll talk, I'll talk about the mobile app in just a second because the big thing for me is what we call the express lane. I'll talk about that in just a second. But you're exactly right. From one dashboard, here's my emails. And not only that, if I send an email to Joe and Joe normally uh, is, is on Messenger, he's, you know, he normally communicates via Messenger. So he's going to send me a Messenger back. Yep. Now, email and Messenger not connected unless you're using our dashboard. When oh. you open up Joe's, co Joe's contact card, not only are all the emails that you've sent him, but all the messenger messages are there as well. Wow, that's so awesome. Everything in one place. Everything in one place. If I send Joe a message on Skype, but then I'm looking at his details on LinkedIn, I can still see that Skype conversation. Unreal. So that's why, and then you talk about publishing. We've got, uh, I don't want to give away the, the, uh, the secret here, but this whole dashboard that we've created, Doc, we're giving it for free. It's what? free. It's free. We have created this to solve an epic problem. We wanted to make sure that we delivered it as an epic solution. It's free. You talk about the publishing section where you want to be able to publish content on blogs and LinkedIn, etc. That's a paid module as part of our, as part of our suite. Sure. So everything we talk about slaying the beast is free. If you want to then be able to take that forward from a productivity, there's some paid modules you can go down that path. Sure. But I just want to, I want to talk about the express lane just for one second. For me, and you're probably the same, and I'm, I'm guessing for the, the two and a half million listeners that you're, that you're tapped into right now, you have too many people messaging you, emailing you, contacting you, your phone's going beep, 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 beep all the time. So for me, again, this is part of the same epic problem. And I said, right. no more. I don't want this. When If I'm in productivity mode, if I'm needing to don't get stuff done, I can't have that, right? No, don't want that but what if your wife calls? Or what if what if your, your, your kid's teacher desperately needs to get hold of you? You can't put the phone in another room because what if in today's right. connected world, right? So in, in our suite, in our mobile app, you can turn on what we call express lane mode. And any contact that you choose, whether that's a contact on Skype or a particular email address or a particular person on Slack, all right, or any of the other platforms, 
if you star that person, you say, that's an express lane person. When I'm in express lane mode, nothing gets through to me unless you've got a star next to your name on those contacts. And those are the express lane messages. Whoa, hang on a second. My kid's teacher's trying to reach me. Wow. All right? Slaying the beast that eats your time while still maintaining the productivity that you need to move forward. So I just want, because I think there's going to be people watching, listening, and we're going to go, I don't really get it. This because it's, and here's the word, it seems too good to be true. So you've created right. something that, that, will not only slay, slay your beast, but will slay my beast. Yeah. Um, the thing that eats my time, which is all these social connections, which I have to be on, like you said, it's not an option anymore. No, whether you're an entrepreneur, we all know it as entrepreneurs, you gotta do it. But even in the C-suite, you gotta do it. You gotta have all those yep. platforms. It eats your time. You've created this platform, this dashboard. I can go in, I can be connected to all those things, and it's no charge. If yeah. I want to do some other things, yeah, I can pay for the extra stuff. But yep. that managing my, t I mean, this is the ultimate time management thing for yeah. that beast of social. That's it. Exactly right. So I'm going to ask the question everybody's going to ask. Why is it free? Yeah, that's Come a great on, question. Come on, because you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah you're going to get me out here. There's got to be some little twist in here, buddy. What are you up to? You yeah. Aussies can't be and trusted. I know. No, that's right. They're, they're, all, <laughs> they're all suckers, those Aussies. No, I tell you why. Because, Dov, when we're looking at creating something epic, I can, I can create a software program tomorrow. And we can go out and sell a million dollars worth of that software. It takes some work. It'll take a year, maybe whatever. And it's, it's great. We can do, I can do that tomorrow. But creating something that has a global impact, that really touches a lot of people. Now, I'm not doing this for any other reason than selfish, all right? I, hi, my name's Walt, and I'm 100% selfish, all right? I'm in this for me. So let me tell you what's in it for me. This company, I'm expecting to grow past 20 million, past 50 million, past 100 million. So you get to have my whole suite of tools, the, the beast slayer as your companion. You don't have to pay for it, but my company gets valued at $100 million. Of course. So that's the catch is that you get to use it, and by using it, you help me get a valuation. Sure. So, welcome to my world, and go and grab this. Let it help you, let it be the beast layer, because secretly, I want 50 million people using this platform, and for somebody to come and say, hey, well, that thing that you've created, here's a check for a couple of hundred million, how about I buy you up? Done, well, now let's talk the next thing. Well, you know, let's have a look a minute. Uh, has Twitter made any money yet? <laughs> right? I don't know what day is it. No, I... right? you know, I think Twitter, so. LinkedIn, all those platforms. Platform. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, Facebook makes a lot of money, but it didn't make any money for a long time. Uh, and long and time. I keep seeing these bullshit things that go around on Facebook. You know, on Tuesday they're going to start ch ch charging for, for Facebook. <laughs> they're already charging, dude. It's called ads. They have those. Yeah, exactly. Did right? you click on that ad? Because that just you just made the money. Yeah, that's it's, it. You know, so I mean. People the same. It's, it's, it's exactly right. So things have changed. And this is one of the things that we can all grasp that you've created an epic tool that slays the beast for each of us that we, we, we have no choice. We have to be on social, but we've got to, we've got to work out how to do this in a way that is actually not only makes sense, but is actually productive for us. Yeah. That's, and that's the key. Because a lot of the time, you know, we're bouncing around. I mean, I, I've done it myself. I've gone and gone, yep. oh, shit, I just spent two and a half hours on social media. And, yep. and, and I've still got seven things on my to-do list. And I promised the, my, my, my beloved that I'm going to be having dinner with her in half an hour. Well, exactly. seven things ain't getting done because I got sucked down that rabbit hole. But at least you posted on Twitter this afternoon, yeah. Yeah, at least exactly. I posted on Twitter. And as my, my good friend Steve Sims, who you, you've probably seen me as a guest on here, Steve Sims yeah. says... Um, if you're famous in Facebook, that's like being rich in Monopoly. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Isn't yeah, that a absolutely. great quote? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so and, and, like, and, and again, as we said, you know, it, it is a reality. You so we it. need to do it in the right way. We need to do it in a smart way that allows us to grow our companies, to grow our brands, to grow everything that we're doing, to push that needle forward. We just need to use it as a tool. And instead of letting it use us, we need to use it. Yeah. So, 
this idea of of doing something epic and you you know we talked about how to do it which is looking for the problem to solve but put that in the context of leadership for me for a moment for our listeners you know one of the things that you like to say is leadership needs to start small tell us what you mean by yeah. that yeah I, I i'm well known for saying that and and what i mean by that is is leadership of your own self and your own fears and we're not talking about leading a team of a hundred thousand people because you literally cannot do that unless you look in the mirror and take that leadership role straight back off yourself yeah. and be able to say you know you you have talked to so many great leaders in in the time that the dog baron show has been on and each of them will will acknowledge and has acknowledged that leadership involves tough decisions mm-hmm when you when you're genuinely looking at something going this is terrifyingly scary but nobody else is going to do it i need to do it that's leadership and what i mean by leadership starts small is that is yourself looking in the mirror right a leadership of one when you've got a tough decision it's going to suck it's going to hurt it's going to be fearful and it's going to be painful and if you don't do it then nobody else will and when i say leadership needs to start small i mean facing that fear of i'm not good enough mm-hmm. facing that fear of i don't have enough money i don't have enough time nobody will listen to me i'm just me all of that noise that we fill ourselves up with leadership is being able to hold the hand up and say stop it this needs to be done i need to step forward so stop with the noise and let's get on with the job. Leadership starts then. Yeah. Because if you can take that and internalize it, everybody listening here is in that same pool, so I'm preaching to the converted. But if you can take that, you can then move it forward into a leadership role of 10 people, of 1,000 people, of 10,000 people. But it starts small and it starts with you facing it up and saying, this is me, I'm it. I'm the guy, let's move it forward. Fair That's nice. what I mean by leadership starts small. Now, one of the things that you talk about is entrepreneurship and kids, mm. right? And, and I want to, we're coming close to the end of the show, but I want to I get this in because I think it's an important thing. What do you think we, we can talk to kids in schools about to make them better leaders and better entrepreneurs for tomorrow? Because it seems to me like, I've said this very often, it's not new. I I believe we're in a leadership crisis. And by that, I'm not talking politics, although I am talking politics, I'm not talking exclusively politics. I think we're in a leadership crisis. So what do you think we can talk to kids in school about to make them better leaders and better entrepreneurs for tomorrow? Because they're going to be leading us tomorrow. That's a a really uh, passionate topic of mine. Because I mentioned earlier in the show that you could stand by a busy road and watch enough crisis go by to last you a lifetime of epic ideas. And it starts, in my opinion, it starts with the kids. Because what I what I want to talk to kids about is the fact that they matter, that their opinions and their abilities to, to have an idea can move the whole of us, all of us, the race forward. It can be a 14-year-old. It can be a 9-year-old. It can be a 16-year-old. It can be a boy, a girl. It can be in any country, anywhere in the world who says, we should do this. And what I want to talk to kids about is make sure that your life matters. And I've said to people before, getting past that self-worth, Dov, you've heard Mm -hmm. me talk about this before, I'm sure. We would talk about without you, the whole is not complete. You make up the whole. If we take you out of it, we are not complete. So never imagine the fact that you don't have value because without you, we're not finished. And I want to take that to every kid because when I stand by the, the side of a busy road and I watch that monotony of people going to work and they're not awake, they are not conscious of the day that's passing them and the hours and the weeks and the months and the years. They're not conscious. Please, kids. Please understand that your life is more than that, that you have an opportunity to create something amazing. Take that idea, that spark that you have and blow air on it until it kindles to a fire. Don't let your life go by 
without realizing that you matter. We want to take that leadership to the kids and say you can make a massive difference to everyone around you. Don't go blindly anymore. Let's wake up and see what we can do. Fantastic, mate. Please tell, that was a, a, a very important piece and I want everybody to get it. But what I also want is for everybody to have an opportunity to 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 tap into this platform for, for us Great. to be able to slay the beast. How can people go find out more about it, about more about you, about your speaking, yeah. about the platforms, about your software company, about all of those things? Where do we find out more about it? Well, of course, we're bringing it all together. We're putting it all in that one position, in that one dashboard. You can follow me. You can follow what we're talking about. You can tap into that stuff. And, of course, you can bring all of your social in together. You can bring all of your email, your contacts, and your calendars. You can do that, and you can bring it all together, and it's simple and free to do. All you need to do is go to gogeo, that's G-O-J-E-O, gogeo.com, sign up, it's free, and you are then part of that whole suite. Moving forward, you've got everything you need right there at your fingertips, up and running within 60 seconds, just connect your accounts, and uh, and you're away, gogeo.com. Well, well, thank you so much. It's been great having you on the show. And thank you for all that you've shared. Thank you for, for your insights and your wisdom and your kindness. It's been really awesome. And we, of course, will make sure that we post that, that link. And I'm going to remind you guys as you're listening to this, even if you're not looking at the show notes, it's gogeo.com. Uh, it's G-O and then it's J-E-O. And the way to think of it is go join everything online. Easy, Perfect. right? Go join everything because it joins everything. That's what it's like for me. It was like, oh, this is so awesome. It joins everything. And you can slay that beast and take your time back. And I think that that is just rocking. However, like we want to say, go do something epic. And you can't do something epic if your time is sucked away by the beast. So go over to Go Geo. Thank you so much, Walt. It's been awesome having you here, my man. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much, mate. It's been a real pleasure. And thanks, everyone. Have a great life moving forward. And we look forward to it. So again, make sure that you listen to the show. Make sure you do something with it. Remember, information on its own is worth the hole in the donut. Transformation takes place with application. So go do something with it. And remember, the research consistently shows that the biggest challenges facing some of the most successful companies is quite counterintuitive. And these fast-growing companies find themselves where they hit a point where they're spending a fortune on training and developing their talent only to have them leave them at a, just a crazy alarming rate. If you're sick of investing in training and development of your talent only to have them leave you before you've got your ROI, then come talk to us at fullmontyleadership.com where we provide you with the essential leadership skills to rekindle and amplify the hidden loyalty assets inside your organization by tapping into purpose. fullmontyleadership.com providing you with the concrete soft skills to get you and your organization to the top and keep you there. Why? Because you can't outsource authenticity. Remember to also get yourself over to the matrix, matrix matrix.fullmontyleadership.com. We don't need the triple W, just matrix like the movie, .fullmontyleadership.com and get your authentic leadership matrix self-assessment tool. It's valued at 197 to get to a self-assess in the five areas of leadership. I'm your host, Dov Barron, founder of Full montyleadership.com and I'm here to assist you tapping into your deep greatness so that you can reach that next level of clarity, focus, purpose and profit in your business, your life and your leadership impact. Till next time, this is Dov Barron saying stay curious my friend, stay curious about slaying that dragon, slaying the beast that's eating your time so that you can do something epic. Till next time, I'm out.